folks, Irish Trekkie back again with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review. This time featuring issue 64, The Phoenix, made famous by Zephram Cochran and we all saw it in First Contact making that glorious and historic first flight. So we have a, what looks like a fantastic model uh, without kind of going too much into it. So let's put this to one side and I love how big this ship is. But anyway, anticipation aside, let's put it over here and let's have a look at the magazine, which has a glorious, glorious CG render of the Phoenix in all her lovely jubbly detail. So let's have a look at what's inside, shall we? So launch 2063, not too far away, and crew three, length 20 meters, max speed warp one. This was the warp test flight, wasn't it? So, We've got four sections. We have the Phoenix designing the ship, Starfleet First Contact costumes. Here we're talking about pants and jackets again and uh, on-screen appearances, and we all know what that is. So type experimental warp ship invented by Zephram Cochran, April 5th, 2063, 20 meters without rocket, crew of three, and again, max speed warp one. And we got some nice, super nice close-ups. What an interesting profile um, off of as well so let's get straight to it oh and by the by this is where she mounts as well so clips on to the struts by the looks of it pylons so wow check out that aft it's very similar to the drawing that i did i have a slightly different perspective on it but awesome nonetheless so the phoenix was constructed largely from salvaged parts but despite the makeshift appearance the two rudimentary warp nacelles were not that different from the ones used in the 24th century so again very very similar um for all you trekkies and trekkers out there but then we have the old school um co engine cowling there as well to get her up into orbit or space uh, whatever you so wish um da -da 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 -da. the phoenix holds a special place in federation history as the first warp capable ship to be built by mankind and in the mid 21st century, humanity was teetering on the edge of second dark age after a third world war. Amid the chaos, a visionary scientist, Zephram Cochran, and his colleague, Lily Sloan, designed and built the Phoenix out of a nuclear missile. Indeed. So we're, we're basically talking about first contact. This was humanity's first manned warp capable spacecraft and it changed history forever yes it did and i really want to watch first contact again even though i watched it recently so visionary indeed he was in it for the book we all know it and he drank we all know it but anyway here's a nice little shot of the kind of the heat shielding um, tiles on the actual ventral section uh here we have it on lift off as well um what was the song magic carpet ride i think that was awesome and uh here we have the separation off the launch phase i think that i think that was like stage two wasn't it all the cowlings are gone there so it allows uh deployment of the nacelles so um what do we have here anything interesting the actual launch vehicle that blasted off was more than 35 meters long the bottom third was made up of conventional rockets and these allowed the ship to break free of earth's atmosphere once in space, the booster rockets detached while the outer casings of the Phoenix also fell away, exposing the two warp nacelles. These then extended ready for warp flight. Indeed. So it was really cool how it was constructed from salvage parts uh, using the chassis of a Titan uh, intercontinental uh, ballistic missile as well. So a weapon of mass destruction brings upon it mankind's most prosperous uh, period and, you know, hope for hundreds of millions upon billions of uh, people. So really cool story. And then I loved the kind of the story arc of it as well. Uh, first contact that is. So ship profile, we have particle exhaust, uh, buzzard ramp scoop, heat tiles, as we said earlier. And here's the three crude cockpit, uh, main thruster reaction section, and uh, NASA supports. So, do, 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 do anything interesting here by the 24th century the phoenix was on display at the smithsonian institution captain picard had seen the exhibit many times as a child but it was never allowed to t he was never allowed to touch it sometimes he always wanted to but we all know that fateful scene where they do touch it and so does that as well it's very funny actually which is all good 
Um, inhabited moon. Okay. Oh yeah, actually, I remember that. Uh, according to Commander Riker, on the moon in the twenty fourth century, um, there was fifty million people living on it. Uh, he told Stephen Cochran that on a clear night you could see Tycho City, New Berlin, and Lake Armstrong. Yeah, would not have been cool. My favorite bits of the magazine. You know, I like to draw as well. And you know, this guy is a cool guy. Um, from my interactions with him and from your interactions with him. So John Eves designed the Phoenix uh, with a little help from uh, Script and Michael Kuda among many others as well. So here we have some concept art. Uh, here we have the capsule with what looks like a burger, um, pie, Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, Booker, Bookbard, Bookaroo, maybe, I don't know. And chorizo, chocolate, chocolate something pie, I don't know. <laughs> and Diane Carr's Cook Shack special. I just don't know what those doodles reference to. Maybe I'm, I'm completely wrong here. But here we have the separate uh, command module there. Again, trusters for maybe or, uh, or CS maneuvers to bring it into, um, basically into atmosphere to bring it down. So I'm assuming either it landed kind of like the SpaceX one uh, power thrusters or to deploy you know parachutes and such or was it a combination of both i don't know so this is an early version of the design um phoenix had a much more involved what was it? oh yeah phoenix had a much more involved shape under the missile plating but that was rejected in favor of a simpler approach as well i think that actually the way it is now is better than um some of the designs as well and i like the more simplistic nacelles uh, here we have the thruster nozzle component, which again was uh, built to be put on the practical model, uh, as far as I'm aware, because they had that silo that they were able to work with as well. And some fantastic sketches here showing it inside the lifter stage, the separation pieces, there's the four uh, panels um, and how they would separate. Deployment of the nacelles and a really detailed uh, concept of the tree tree three seat cockpit uh, done by ease as well so like even down to like vents tiling uh, how the command chair would swing back probably do a loop around for them to sit into maybe these guys swung around as well but i like that it's such a cool philosophy and i'm sure there's some great little tidbits in here that i'm going to be really going through creating the costumes for first contact so we have some nice concept art there picard Riker. um the Forge, Crusher Troy, yeah, that's... Will we be wearing that? I don't think so. I think everyone's going to be hipsters in 2063. No, we're dead body. I don't know, I'm only mess. <laughs> here we have some on-screen uh, images here as well. Reminiscent to the CG uh, picture that we saw there earlier. Um, first appearance, Star Trek First Contact, designed by John Ease. And that leads us on to issue 65, the Zindi Aquatic Cruiser. Looking forward to that, but we'll have to wait two weeks, hopefully, and get our hands on that. So that's pretty much it, folks. We're going to close out on the back graphic here, and we're going to get up close and personal with the Phoenix. Here we have the Phoenix, and it looks pretty awesome from this distance anyway. So let's take her out of our box, and let's get super, super close with it. Okay, hang on. Do, 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 do. Is there any way to... Okay. So I advise taking it out from the back and pulling it towards you. Because there's some ribs in here. I was worried about the cockpit. So, Phoenix. Phoenix, Phoenix. The rise of the Phoenix. Oh. Okay, the cells are a bit wonky. Is it the same? Okay, they flex. Right, okay. So, uh, Let's go back to that. Now, let me swing around here. Let's get super nice on it. Actually, it looks really nice, uh, to be honest with you. Um, nice detailing there in the reaction chamber, in the actual aft thruster module there as well, and the cockpit looks pretty, pretty good. We have a pretty huge seam running down the insides. Is that the same on the inside? Yeah, it is. Um, there's some detailing that's missing in there because it wasn't like that. There was a kind of an arch in here that led uh, along with the nacelles here. And again, that should be black from memory. 
Again, I kind of studied this model quite a bit when I was doing a sketch of it. Um, so that's a bit of a, oh God, why? This kind of looks blue, but it's actually white. So they, they are white, it just kind of, maybe something in the paint that it makes it kind of look or have a blue undertone in it. Yeah, something stuck on that NASA, no biggie. So, cockpit, let's work our way down. So here we have our nose cone, nice kind of glimmer to it. Um, windows are misaligned, god damn you. The, those two are fine, they're just crooked. Same on that side as well. It's a bit more substantial on that side than it is on that side. From a distance, not too bad, but there's too much of a spacing between them. Here we have the tiles. Seam is, okay, the seam is kind of hidden in there as well. Yeah, I, I kind of, that's probably as neat as that could have been. FYI, I'm just trying to think. So die cast, okay. Die cast from, yeah, die cast here, plastic on the other side. Um, you can kind of see the difference in the paint as well. It kind of looks slightly shinier on the ventral section here as well. But good detailing on the sculpt of it. Actually, let me just pull that back a little bit. Um, you can kind of see the weathered style paint effect in here as well. She's not a pretty new ship, so that's kind of nice. We have some red detailing there on some of the modules. Bit of a scuff on the ventral section there. Again, going down to the neck just aft off the command module. Again, good sculpt. Overall, I think the sculpt is actually quite nice. Decent paneling throughout. Those pylons again, I think they're pretty accurate from memory. And uh, nacelles. We have Perspex. So the nacelles have a bit of a plastic um module just on the aft there as well the exhaust and it's kind of like in an opaque color which is actually nice it's not just painted in so it has that kind of uh you know transparent quality to it and again like just overall we have three transparent modules to each of the nacelles um it's just a shame that they are off degree there maybe with a bit of heat um persuasion we might get these to kind of fix in as well they're not a million miles away and um, i don't want to force them uh, too much but um like overall i think the sculpt is actually quite nice on these and these paint um apps going down are pretty accurate except for obviously that window th those windows now again with the windows at the cockpit like they're symmetrically offline as well so again symmetry of failure so there's that to it that one doesn't stand out like a million miles but anyway Enough said about that. Um, paint apps are pretty much duplicated on the ventral as they are on the dorsal as well. And they are very neat and tidy, like, you know, especially on like the nacelles and just that central fuselage section. Uh, the reaction area, again, there's a, quite a lot of detail and pretty accurate um, and in line um, paint applications as well. Like there's a whole host of ins and outs and greebling, but again, very accurate to the model that we saw on screen. These engine noz uh, nozzles here aren't accurate, like they're just kind of directed down, which doesn't make any sense because it would burn the crap out of this cowling. So they should be a little bit more off this style and uh, venting out the way uh, in line with this kind of degree as well. So they're not accurate. Um, they have them, but they're, they're, just, they're just not accurate at all. Um, good detailing on the actual uh, nozzle here off the main uh, burn uh, unit. Uh, that's pretty much similar on the inside as well. It's not just flattened. Um, so that's nice uh, overall. Like I actually like it. Um, I think that's a really nice model. It's just, I think the biggest letdown here, the biggest letdowns are just for me, the nacelles are just a little offline. Uh, I know some people have had worse, some people have had um, perfect ones. That big seam is a bit gaudy and there's detailing that's been missed in there which would have been nice and you know painting it black would have maybe made that a little bit more subtle as well but again you have to have seams and um, i don't know where they would have hit them elsewhere um again my cockpits are misaligned but again they're done so symmetrically as well so it's not too too bad overall I actually really like the phoenix and um you know paint apps and sculpt i think have been nicely done on that 
and it's nice that it actually stands uh, like that itself as well but it'd be interesting to see how she actually mounts onto the actual supply stand but let's actually have a look at that shall we um so yeah phoenix on the stand about to happen oh yes so the actual stand mounts centrally here and how do we just aha there we go bit of a tight squeeze but she's in there she's in there pretty pretty well so you can see now actually sorry <laughs> i kind of hold it up here so the stand fits in there pretty well and um, but with my kind of misaligned it brings the overall display of it a little bit nose down so um she sits almost horizontally but uh you can see the kind of front on view of it there as well yeah, it's just uh, yeah i can probably i can probably fix those um so it's nice it's quite sizable you can see how much it sits over the actual stand itself as well like to be honest with you okay it has its it has its issues but i think it has more going for it than it has going against it as well and i like it um I would have liked it better, but I like it nonetheless as well. And um, I think it's, it sits quite nicely there. I kind of, it would have been nice to have a really severe angle on this, like to have the cowling almost kind of down here and have it just shooting up the way, um, rather than this kind of traditional, because like we have this kind of ballistic, intercontinental ballistic Titan missile here with extending nacelles. So it would have been nice if that was possible. Um, Maybe you could kind of heat treat that, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't recommend unless you're very, very skilled and very confident in that. But um, let's compare it to a ship on the line uh, before we wrap up and we'll do a little bit of a closer um, pass through and then we'll call it a day. Of course, I had to bring another one of Eve's classic designs, the Enterprise E. We haven't seen her in a while in one of these videos, have we? So again, um, these guys shared the limelight in the same movie, all these girls. And um, again, like, you know, centuries apart, but the idea is the same, you know, pylon nacelles, you know, coming from the main fuselage or drive section as well. But um, I think that's a nice, I think that's a nice little first contact set. And we have some other ships from first contact that battled the Borg as well. So that's that kind of film pretty much flushed out, except for the Borg cube, which I don't think we're going to be getting. I know we have the tactical cube, but it would be nice to get uh, the Borg cube as well. But guys and girls, what do you think of the Phoenix? Pros, cons? Is this something on your wish list? And um, if not, is there a particular reason why? Um, I don't think you'd be, you know, disappointed with this ship, to be honest with you. Um, as I said, we've kind of identified one or two issues with the particular ship that I have. Maybe that's not the same with your own ship. Maybe it could be worse. But, you know, it, sometimes it can be a bit of luck of the draw as well. But customer service, they're pretty okay when you can get them. They're actually sending me um, a replacement for my ISS Enterprise as well. I got in contact with them. I think Facebook is the best way to get in contact with those folks um, as they respond pretty quickly um, as well. So that pretty much wraps up the uh, Phoenix issue 64 review. Um, let me do a little bit of a close flyby before we say goodbye. It is nice, actually. You know, I think the two of them are actually really nice counterparts together. The first warp ship, and at the time, the most advanced Federation ship um, ever constructed as well. Again, caveat at the time. So, guys and girls, that's it for issue 64. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Your support is always appreciated. And I will see you in the next video. Take it easy and goodbye. Thank you.